Well, good afternoon, and um, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Saul Golden, and I'd like to thank uh, Ray's and the Assembly for inviting me today to, to take part in this, uh, this diverse panel. Um, I guess in, in difference to some of my colleagues, I am uh, laying my cards out. I'm an architect uh, by, by practice, architect and urban designer. And I've been working and teaching in Northern Ireland since about 2002, uh, increasingly getting into areas of research um, through uh, with my colleagues uh, who couldn't join us today, but uh, my colleagues at the Urban Research Lab through the University of Ulster and the Built Environment Research Institute, uh, looking at ways to improve on um, sustainable and inclusive development across Northern Ireland, uh, looking at how the, to improve the capacity across all levels to help support and deliver uh, those types of development and, and planning, and also the responsibilities that professionals and political leaders alike um, have to engage better with the public and to help create uh, policies and best practice uh, to help deliver um, and support kind of future, future growth in the right directions. So today, uh, the briefing I'm going to give uh, is called a fresh look uh, at community engagement and regeneration. And it is about best practice or, or better practice and in innovative policy um, in, in Northern Ireland. Um, I'm going to present on research uh, that I've been involved with, with with colleagues since about 2012. Um, and although we've been working across Northern Ireland, I'm going to talk a bit more about some of the projects and uh, research deriving from involvement around Belfast, but it is more transferable um, beyond that. Um, and my interest is really in, in policies and, and developments that connect Northern Ireland to more international aspects and challenges that, that urban um, and even rural development uh, face. So I'm going to focus on uh, the perceived shortcomings in public engagement, focusing on, on local and neighborhood consultation processes for major many major public and private regeneration projects that fall within the Assembly's remits through the Executive Office and Ministerial Departments, including infrastructure, economy, and communities. Uh, I was looking at the, the statutory consultation requirements under uh, recent planning changes and arguing that public engagement objectives that were set out in the Fresh Start Agreement um, remain relevant to current policy and are worthy of re-examining and, and, and making sure that they actually find their way uh, into practice. I'm going to try this. So there we are. So the, the context of what I'm here to discuss is uh, a perceived issue with public and private development processes, especially the uh, larger projects, that lacking uh, a lack of effective public engagement uh, can result in perceptions, especially at a public level, of predetermined outcomes uh, and uh, less effective kind of levels of consultation. I'll be looking at uh, case studies where my uh, colleagues and I have been involved with more public-focused events, not running counter to, but in parallel to uh, planning applications for major ap application, uh, planning um, developments, uh, and in response to some of these major regeneration proposals. Um, along with the case studies uh, out in the field, we, were, um, we developed, we, we led a, a symposium where we were joined by local communities uh, and members of statutory agencies from Department of Infrastructure to the Ulster Architectural Heritage Society, uh, PLACE, the Ministerial Advisor Group, and, and others. And the focus of what we're trying to uh, discuss today is low, low cost and more incremental and locally based events that we, we believe can more actively engage with communities and in return can help gather and, and gain better quality data to inform decisions. Um, the, the methods, uh, along with discussing some of the, the out, work out in the field is to look at um, surveys that we led and questionnaires with participants and with uh, professionals and developers. And we hope that we'll be able to contribute to developments of planning policy and practice that will be able to um, achieve more effective and grounded engagement strategies and, and outcomes for, for delivery. Um, we, we sort of began with this hopefully well-known um, model of participation uh, by, by Arnstein, it's, it's been around since the late 60s, um, with the understanding that no matter where development comes from, where planning and, and um, regeneration, whether it's from the private sector or whether it's um, public uh, and, and government-led or whether it's uh, community-led events, that there's a very complex array of stakeholders and what you might call the loose term of communities um, that, uh, that help shape 
the decisions on, on buildings and spaces, especially spaces that were public or become privatized or a mixture of both, um, and how those affect the social, cultural, economic character of, of neighborhoods. Um, there's a lot of research that has gone on since the mid-90s uh, and about that the impact of larger regeneration projects can have a massive investment in buildings, but can actually have very little impact on local people. Um, and we're trying to help find a, a model which is somewhere between uh, or closer to a partnership approach rather than um, looking at um, total citizen control or, um, or other models which are more considered more top-down. The background is for our, for our research here is the changes in planning policy that took place in 2015. Um, and just to make sure you're reading your briefing packets properly, this is the correct uh, corrected the date. It says June 2016 on your, your packets, but it's actually from uh, July 2015 um, that all major new planning applications have to go through a statutory process and provide evidence that they've held a consultation process. Uh, of the two main pieces of evidence that has to be shown is that there's been at least one public event in the locality in which the proposed development is taking place where the public and other stakeholders might make comments, but also that they have to publish in a newspaper uh, in the locality uh, about the proposed development with information that includes um, where the events take place, the type and scale of the development, um, and information that the, um, uh, the, the comments gathered are actually not for the, the planning application they are for the, the developer or the developer vehicle or the department itself. Unique in Northern Ireland, the council set out uh, much of this uh, role for public engagement, but the regeneration powers, which were set to be devolved out to the 11 new councils, still remain uh, within the Department of Communities uh, and therefore affect at a, at a more strategic and, and regional level um, quite a lot of projects which affect the funding and development of, of the built environment. Now going back to what I mentioned about the, the fresh start, uh, why we think this is something still relevant, even though it never really had a chance to get off the ground after it was launched in late 2015, so that it was a, an agreement or launched by the, the executive and the UK and Irish governments. It was meant to be a far-reaching and comprehensive framework to address many of the challenging and, and intractable issues, whether they be ethno or sectarian uh, or just issues of marginalization of, um, of, of young people and older people uh, across um, Northern Ireland. Included with, within the, that agreement was draft uh, guidelines for the good practice and consultation, which included these three objectives, to enhance decision making, to improve the acceptability of decisions reached, and to build capacity internally and externally for improved relationships and stakeholder input. Now these measures were to improve foreign and direct investment, but also um, to protect public services and to help widen the engagement of uh, across um, all communities and to um, also support the growth and sustainability of, of local indigenous businesses. So from, from our research within Northern Ireland, the UK, and across Europe, what we've kind of, th this diagram is an example of uh, the top level being what we consider more sustainable and inclusive and therefore successful um, development in terms of the, their constituents, their stakeholders are made up of the widest range of, of workers, of residents, of shoppers, and even tourists. The management of those developments are, are shared across community, public government, and private, and that their use is more open, uh, maintained as, a more, as, as, more, as public as possible with as diverse a range uh, of uses, as opposed to at the bottom left, uh, a much more restricted um, vehicle that delivers and controls and prioritizes. So our argument is that in comparison to these successful spaces, consultation processes should also try to be as equally inclusive and broad um, in, in order to gain the, the most effective uh, data, the most effective knowledge. I said, well, we've been working in, in rural and urban communities across uh, Northern Ireland, what this the research where we were a bit more systematic about was projects uh, across north, south, east, and, and west Belfast and the inner city affecting rural and periphery communities um, and, and, neighbor, and neighborhoods. 
what we're trying to do is learn lessons from some of the failed proposals, failed projects. Um, this is an example of uh, the city centre in Belfast. Uh, it's been called the Inner North, Smithfield and Union, uh, the Library Press Quarter, many different names. Uh, and over the last 10 to 15 years, it's had uh, many different master plans, many different consultants, uh, many different projects proposed, all of varying um, varying options in how to deal with the existing building fabric, with the, with the streets, with uh, diversity of uses. Um, none of them have come to fruition, uh, and so there's been quite a lot of money spent time and time and again to bring in and collect data and collect views. Um, and the most recent one in 2016, um, which was a 300 million pound proposal, um, collapsed when the developer didn't um, submit information, but also that was mainly driven by um, a lack of engagement with the community and their view that the plan should be thrown out and all stakeholders called back rather than kind of a, a, small, a small panel of stakeholders. Um, and processes like this tend to result in um, consultation fatigue. So you get less and less effective engagement from communities, from businesses who continue to give up their time and don't see, um, as my colleague Gillian mentioned there, they don't see the results of what their data is actually going towards. So what we have been trying to, to do is look at some international case studies uh, and examples of what we call active engines. A more, um, more active, out in the field, um, that, but that can be a combination of events, uh, of occupations of spaces to help experiment and to help show how spaces might, might be used. Um, they're, they're low cost before major investment is made and we try to target them as open-ended processes rather than coming in with designs um, and kind of glossy models or, 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 or visualizations. And the idea is based on an, um, a concept called triangulation, which is from a, an American economist and urbanist named William White, um, that if you can create, bring, bring public and, and people um, together in a space and add an element, an activity, an event, an object, something, you, you can foster conversations between strangers that might not normally happen. Um, this happens quite often on, on culture nights and things like that. Um, so we try to approach it through a social and, and, and community engagement approach um, where collecting data became a byproduct rather than standing in front of people with clipboards in, in the streets. Um, some of the methods that, that we use are based on international precedents. Um, place mapping is developed by Project for Public Spaces. Um, occupations and, and exhibits have been used across the UK and, and Europe by arts and uh, organizations um, to, to both occupy spaces in a positive way, not in a, in a, in a negative way, um, to, to allow people to share their views um, rather than on a form or on a, on, on a survey, um, and to feel that they are perhaps part of something before ideas have been solidified. Um, these can also include uh, briefing events, um, which can help to set the groundwork for, for departments and for, for policy and for developers. Um, and the Royal Institute of British Architects, um, for example, has a, it's called a briefing game in which you can use the, the so that they're not as, uh, not sort of loosely bringing people together. They are semi-structured events, um, but they are trying to go out into the community rather than waiting for communities to, to come to staged events or staged exhibitions. What these events also try to do is use the publicity and, um, and, and social media in a way that isn't just to promote or state the dates of an event, but to, again, keep this idea of conversations and collecting data uh, across all ranges of platforms that are possible. And what we found is that, um, in some instances, our almost no cost or very low cost events, which were supported by uh, by local volunteers, by organizations, by businesses, and were attended by um, some developers and Department of, of Communities uh, representatives. Um, in some instances, we were returning 30% of all the comments that were received in terms of the consultation over a three-month period under the normal statutory kind of processes. Um, and because we were getting that high of a return, we sort of felt, well, maybe there is some value um, in, in, in what we're doing. And we established a, a set of surveys um, with participants, but also sending them out to, to members uh, of the planning and design professionals through the uh, RTPI, the Royal Town Planning Institute, the RSUA, uh, the Ulster Architects um, Society, represent representatives of the statutory and voluntary organizations from the 
Heritage Society to place to the Ministerial Advisory Group, um, Departments of Community and SIB and, and so forth, uh, and also trying to bridge um, age barriers by bringing in students um, from Ulster University and, and Queen's University and FE Colleges and as many local businesses in each area as, as we could get returns on. Um, our, our aim was, was more qualitative to try to understand what the involvement that people had, what was their experience in consultation and, and project proposals, what were their sources of information about each of those developments, where did they find or, or what was the quality of information they were getting, what were the reasons for responding or not responding uh, to these traditional processes, um, and what priorities did they feel were maybe being missed or um, were being overlooked uh, in traditional processes that they, they wanted to, to bring to light. Um, we also asked about what were their perceptions about these more uh, informal events and more art-based exhibitions um, and their comments on the statutory consultations and the quality of the public realm in general. Um, in terms of the, the scope of the briefing today, um, I give an overview of um, the responses and the actions that we proposed to come from that. Um, Maybe not surprising as well, there was a, a clear lack of engagement uh, and an awareness, really, which was the issue of how to access information and feedback amongst the public uh, through the traditional processes. Even if you are you know how to use computers and, and the internet, um, to actually sometimes define information about development, about planning decisions, and about previous consultations can be quite daunting. Um, so there was a feeling by actually going out and, and trying to do demonstrations and events and, and talk to people um, that that could become and that, that is possible to be a viable and also economically efficient way for the public to be able to contribute at a more strategic level, as meaning not, um, not as just a, a commentary on advanced stage proposals at which it's usually too late to, to really have an impact. Um, the, the questionnaires and the feedback we received also highlighted that at the bottom um, quite a range of priorities and, and themes uh, that would apply to major planning projects and, and regeneration that policy and best practice could take into account. Um, ranging from, uh, on, on the left-hand side, more social, uh, more social um, priorities for the types of uses and, the, and access and the input, the levels of input for the public, uh, to more design considerations, the type of infrastructure and, and wider implications, uh, to the management, how, how developments would be uh, maintained and managed and who would be responsible once uh, they were completed to how they would be furnished and and more kind of um, specific economic costs and the returns that communities and employers and employees m might be expected to deliver. Um, some, the, some of the further findings were that the, the less formal events certainly uh, as I mentioned could be more effective when they are used uh, at earlier stages rather than at advanced stages. Um, that there were members of the public certainly expressed a, a feeling that if they shared negative information almost at any stage that they could be hurting or thwarting any investment. So the traditional processes have a, a danger that the, the data they're collecting can be skewed um, because there is a fear that, well, we, we want something to happen here so you're not getting the, the correct data. Um, the, the idea of the expert trap not appearing to, to <coughs> be approaching members of the public as if you are experts um, or um, as that was seen as a way of alienating lay people and cutting off these opportunities to have deeper conversations uh, and and getting better data. So the idea of the community was also something you, you don't really know, uh, especially particularly in Northern Ireland, who is and who speaks for communities and the more informal events allowed a wider range of conversations so you don't always know who the right people might be. Um, but that these earlier engagement processes were seen to be a way to build a better um, and effective starting process rather than coming in and asking for buy-in to things which are already decided. Um, and that, in, in these cases, that any consultation should have a greater emphasis um, on strategies rather than on computer vi visualizations. So some of the concluding thoughts and some of the actions that we were recommending, so we, we feel that we can learn from good management techniques and from inclusive design places in order to enhance how data is collected and how the outcomes of major projects can have a better economic, social, and environmental 
um, impacts on the wider community in Northern Ireland. To address current and perceived failings, uh, it is our view that future policy reviews should really consider the, the extent of evidence and rather than the, the evidence of having static exhibitions about designs and proposals already completed, but should really focus on um, evidence of earlier stage uh, and strategic <coughs> consultation. And to help avoid, uh, avoid issues of consultation fatigue and the aborted capital which is invested both in, in, the, in the social aspects of people but also the financial outlay for departments and investors, uh, the best practice should promote a wider use of inclusive data and also develop in parallel a better process of evaluating uh, the type and the quality of data received. So in conclusion that where clients, communities, and statutory organizations can more jointly articulate their planning design and aspirations through a more interactive process. The result in terms of, of data and, and policy decisions can be an improved local buy-in, improved decision-making capacity, and as we hope, the implication or the, the implementation of the fresh start objectives more effectively. Thank you. Mm -hmm.